All right. Hi, everybody. I think I think I'm online. I think things are happening. If you're here and you're listening, thank you. Welcome. My name is Kay Mack, and I like to draw. And I haven't live streamed for a while. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is what I was going to say before I got started. Um, because of the mic setup that I'm using, sometimes there's like these moments where there's this like fuzz as part of the playback it always ends um so if that happens and you're listening to this and you hear a like like all of a sudden i start going crinkly it won't last it it does end um and i apologize i apologize if you listen to this and you get that far thank you <laughs> so i want to today do a live stream about um inking hair and i found some inking brushes that i really like uh let's see can we do reference? I want to have an image. Import image. Import image. No? Okay. This is a new feature in, in Procreate, and I'm like still trying to figure it out. Like You can have reference images, which is super cool. Um, so I found these new brushes, and uh, I like them a lot. Or it's not that it's not so much that they're new, it's just maybe that I'm I'm using them for the first time. And they're from Ram Studio Comics. And the guy who does Ram Studio Comics has a ton of inking videos on YouTube. So if you're like looking for like the expert to help you out, like he's a, he's a good guy to do it. So um, I've been thinking a lot about comic hair lately and uh, I'm just kind of like following their thing. So I'm gonna use comic inker first. And so I think comic hair comes in, in two waves. <laughs> If you can forgive sort of the pun. Um, if you look at this image, and this is an illustration by Leonard Starr. I'm not sure what comic it's from, but you can see the way that the, the heavy brush is... Um, there's also a lighter brush that's behind it. Uh, or there's a smaller brush and there's a big brush. So I think there's like two brushes going on. And this comic inker um, sometimes does a really nice job... Or I have I've found that it maybe does a nice job, um, and you know, sort of creating it. And if you use this one-two combo of the comic inker and the um, technical pen, you can sort of recreate this look. And so it's all about a matter of like getting, um, you know, sort of like that brush-like end to it, which I think is is the important part. And I'm not saying these brushes are absolutely perfect, but they're definitely worth trying for this kind of thing. Um, and I th you can get these brushes and it's like a donation-based pay system. So, uh, I don't know, if you think about like if you buy a brush at the store, uh, it, it costs a few dollars. So it's like, if you're gonna like, if you end up using these brushes a lot, you know, like swing the guy a couple bucks. Uh, I think that that might be nice. I'm starting with the the dark first, and I don't I don't know if that's like the best plan because it it I don't know yeah I don't know actually I might try it the other way around. Sometimes it's a good plan and sometimes it's not. There's this book by um, this guy Jack Ham, and he uh, I love his book. It's one of the first um, inking books I ever or like books I ever read about like drawing comics. Look how thin this line is in comparison. I feel like my my biggest fight with myself is like not trying to do it all with one brush. <laughs> um, this technical pen is nice because it does give you like just like a slight variation in in size, so it's not like a, a mono weight. Um, and I feel like the comic inker brush from this set uh, doesn't like it can get fine but not fine enough. Um, just trying to get like a nice line. I'm not even worried, I'm not even here to do ears today. Why am I drawing these ears? Uh, I haven't live streamed, um, I missed the last two weeks and like in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna live stream twice a week, every single week. That is a reasonable thing that a person can do. Um, and then I've been contracting for my old job, so I've been working like a job and a half. Uh, so I've just been like, oh man, this is not as easy as I thought it was to have a consistent streaming schedule when you are also working a full-time job. And I did contract today, uh, but I was like, man, if I don't get back into this, I, like I'm, 
I'm gonna lose I'm gonna lose steam and I'm not gonna do it like at all so uh I was like just just do it and and part of it was like when I did the the last episode the one about Nell Brinkley uh I did like a lot of research I did like a lot of um like uh just like like practicing how I wanted to tell the story of um Oh God. Okay. Yeah. So I'm practicing one how I wanted to tell the story of that guy uh, who murdered Henry, Harry, uh, Henry Thaw. Thaw was his last name. Um, and <laughs> I realized afterwards that I'd, I'd I'd been like saying his name wrong the entire time, and I was like, oh no, this is this is awful. Um, but but and so then when I was like, oh, I, I'm gonna live stream again, and I want to talk about Alex Raymond. I'm like, oh, but I should do research and like like practice what I'm gonna say and like all this stuff. And then I, like, like just like the prep work involved in that. I was like, yeah, I'm not. Like I just kept putting it off. Um, so here you are. I have very little prep work. Um, this is not to say that there's not interesting things about. Alex Raymond to talk about because they're definitely, definitely, definitely are. Um, or even, even Jack Leonard. Um, is that who this is? Yeah, Leonard Starr. There, there's also, like, Leonard Starr, I'm sure, has a unique history and, like, a worthy story to tell. I just haven't, like, found them yet. Uh, but the other thing that's hard about Alex Raymond is that, like, he, not hard, sad, um, it's like if you've never heard of Alex Raymond and you're interested in comic book inking at all, um, it's very likely that that your heroes of, of comic inking heard of Alex Raymond. I feel like like everyone knew who Alex Raymond was. Like um, everyone was inspired by him and inspired by his work. And when we get to like his panels, uh, you'll start to see why. But he just had... A beautiful style like he he was a true master of this art form uh, and it's not just that he was good at inking or that he was good at drawing but he was also really good at composition and I and I feel like that sets his work apart like like it, they're just beautiful to look at they're just like straight up nice uh they're like the, they're the kind of thing that that makes me mad as an artist because i'm like uh oh. it's almost like like you get in the boat and you've got all your supplies and you're like i'm gonna go exploring and find this brave new territory and then you get there and like alex raymond is there already <laughs> he's already done it i was like oh he's already created the perfect comic style <laughs> so uh, hopefully I'll spend some more time with him. I also want to get back to, um, Hal Foster. Cause I, I just have such a, like, soft spot for him now. Uh, I actually <laughs> went to get some Hal Foster books from the library and, um, and, <laughs> uh, I accidentally got one of the new Prince Valiants. And what does it mean to get a new Prince Valiant? Um, this brush is not being as cool to me as it was the other day. Maybe, okay, maybe we'll try that. It's like that, that round edge that I want. Um, it's so different in digital as opposed to, uh, you know, just, just plain old ink. And I think, oh, okay, so I'm going to finish my Hal Foster story, sorry, uh, <laughs> hypothetical listener is um I got yeah I got the new artist and I was like because I was like looking at it I'm like oh man this artwork really just isn't my thing maybe Hal Foster was losing his edge and it was like oh it wasn't Hal Foster at all so now I have the the original and no disrespect to the guys drawing it now I'm sure it's fantastic uh it's just like I was looking for something really specific I've been really interested in like drawing nature lately and um I just feel like I want to look at Hal Foster's original uh, nature drawings because that was something that he he was really really good at and he was really good at composing panels that had like depth to them and um, so yeah so when I get that I'm gonna you know watch out <laughs> watch out world uh, here I come um, I don't know if it's like this head I'm like this is not 
like as going as well as I had hoped already. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a thing. Uh, yeah, it's okay. And it's still the case that uh, my iPad is like a little bit uh, behind um, on the streaming than it is like in real life. So I'm just like, you know, I'm an amateur. Like, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? Um, okay, so here's something I want to like draw attention to. And it's that um, I feel like when you look at especially like the original, like if you have a, a line art here that has like sort of evidence of the original inking. Um, like since this has like the see-through sort of opaque inks, this is not something that, this is not an image that comes from uh, the final newspaper print. This is like like prior to press. And, and it's probably like, like there's a lot of these Oh, see, so see what happens here. It's like I get, um, I get ahead of myself. Like you have to have this tech pen, this like, s like this smaller, this smaller brush size. Even though I was getting something close to that, uh, it's, it's like the the comic inker just can't get fine enough line. And I'm I'm always 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 like impatient. I'm like. I should, I should only have to use one brush. And I, I don't even think like these artists used one brush. <laughs> um, basically, I'm a big giant baby who doesn't stream and doesn't try very hard. And thanks for sticking with me anyway. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I do think that uh, this practice I'm doing, like even if no one ever ends up watching the live stream, like I can already tell that it's helped me um i i attend like a, a philosophy group and we meet online and i'm like the worst like i always like i have to be doing something with my hands or i cannot pay attention and especially to stuff like 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 philosophical treatises or or what have you um so when we have those those meetups, I like to do drawings, and I did a drawing on Friday night, and I could just tell that like, like I understood more about inking, and I'd like used like the inking pens enough that uh, like it was it was all right. I was like it wasn't perfect, but it was like oh I can see like how this practice has improved um, like my output. Uh, yeah, I can't remember why I started telling that story. Okay, yeah. I think I was talking about, like... So the reason it matters that uh, these are not the final newspaper prints is that you can really tell a difference. Like, And one of the things that I think will happen, or that did happen to this art as it was getting printed, was um, it it loses a lot of the detail. So if you like had this panel from a newspaper, I think you would like like lose so much of the fine detail and it would just look very dark and and, and like so I'm going to zoom in here. And you can kind of you can see the like you can just make out the the thin lines from below. Uh, but in the newspaper this would just print like almost just like all black. Uh, so if you're like trying to recreate the ink styles of these of these men, it it, it really does. It's like it comes down to like you have to look at both. Like did, they were inking these under the assumption that it was going to be printed in like a really unforgiving medium. And I've talked a little bit about that before, but I guess I could talk more about it now because I didn't prepare anything else to say for real. Um, why should you listen to me talk about this? Well, so I used to um, teach a class at a local community college about print production design. Um, I'm, I'm a graphic designer in my real life. Uh, and this is like, it's my job to, to prepare things for print. So it, it's, it's an area where I have some minimal expertise. Um, and so these comics were printed on 
newsprint. And so newsprint is a really porous paper. Um, it doesn't hold fine detail well. It's like a, a sponge. So like a Bristol board is what they would have drawn this on. And, and a Bristol board is like a china plate for doing a, a kitchen analogy. Um, which is, uh, what's, a, what's a better analogy? Um, what's something that does absorb water, but not very easily? Oh, no, I'm abandoning it. Um, Bristol board doesn't, the ink like sits on top of it. So I guess maybe like a plate is, is like a thing. Like it doesn't soak into the paper that's as much. Uh, and it's, it's really thick. It has like a tight weave to it. Um, and so this, this stuff that I'm working from, uh, one or like high res, um, images mostly from like auction sites because people buy the original artwork and they are from the original. Also, I'm standing. I'll talk about that later. And I keep hearing this like buzz from the from the headphones, so I'm like, oh, I hope that doesn't mean that everything I'm saying is super crackly. Um, we'll find out. <laughs> okay, so this is drawn on Bristol board, which is uh, like a nice, not very absorbent paper. The ink sits on top, so the line doesn't spread. It doesn't have like that crinkly feeling to it. And if you do some like comic inking uh, brush sets, especially for Procreate, you'll see that they have sort of these crinkly edges to them. Uh, some of the brushes. And it looks, and that's to mimic the ink spreading on the paper. Like, that's, that's what that's for. Um, that wasn't something that the original artists, like, put into it. That's something that was, like, an interaction of the medium, which is the paper. The medium is the thing that it's printed on. Uh, that's an interaction of that and the ink. So it's not in the pen itself, it was a, a function of the paper that it was drawn on. Fascinating, I know. Tell this, tell this story at parties, you will um, be quickly wondering why you're the only person in the room. <laughs> um, these eyelashes are not that great, but that's not why we're here today. Uh, yeah, so Bristol board, great. Newsprint, not so great. So if you like go, I mean, I think it, it really would help. Like. Like, compare the two. Like, see what style you're really trying to emulate. Like, like you don't have to, like, do the things that they're doing um, that don't make sense. Like, like if, if you're just trying to, like, echo the way that it looked when you read it, like, it's going to be a different thing than if you're trying to, like, echo what they did on the, the Bristol board itself. Um, there's just two, like, slightly different styles. One has more detail and one has less. Um, but so the other part, the, the interesting thing about the way that these comics were printed is that they are printed on a web offset press. So like at the time that this, this kind of stuff was printed, um, they were printing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and if not thousands of copies, if it was in a big city, um, or even a small city because people didn't have the internet back then. Um, the way that they got their news was from the newspaper and you could get it delivered to your house, like I did when I was a kid. Uh, and to, if you're gonna print like that much, it's all about like, what's the cost per unit? Like what's the cost per unit of printing something? And if you're printing a gazillion, they, ha they would have just like these huge machines and they were called offset presses. And so you would get like a literal roll of paper. You wouldn't you wouldn't like go to the store and get like bond paper and print it from there. You would get like a literal roll of paper. Gigantic, like as big as as big as me. And I'm five five. Uh oh, that's that sound <laughs> worries me. Okay, sorry. Sorry. It's like a sound you can't hear. Let me talk about things that you can't hear. So you get like a literal roll, as big as me, as wide as a house. <laughs> and you would uh, like roll it down the line and then uh everything would print like like and it wouldn't be like on individual pages you just print and then you'd cut the pages apart later and the advantage of, of doing it that way is that it's really really fast like it's really fast to print that stuff and then you would like you know maybe 
depending on, you could heat set it or you could cold set it, depending on how fast you needed to be. Um, and then you would have, you know, sort of your newspaper that you could deliver to a million people and you could print them at the night. And that's why it's sort of like a, I don't know, if you want like, like more on like that life, like I feel like, I don't know, just read Spider-Man. He worked at a newspaper. Uh, Clark Kent worked for a newspaper and there's always that sort of like stop the presses it's because they have these big giant machines and and once they start like saying stop the presses is like a super dramatic thing because it's like you have to you know if you have to reprint something or it's like it's just like oh that's gonna cost that's gonna cost uh so you really had to get it right um yeah so that that's that story I I don't know what people are like printing like now i mean like so obviously there are still newspapers like so there's still like newspapers in my town the new the newspaper that i read when i was a kid still or like that we got delivered to our house still exists and we got two different papers we got the statesman journal which was the, the salem paper um and we got the oregonian which was the portland paper and so the oregonian was better um because it had more pages and you know better paid employees and the statesman journal was bad but it wasn't as bad as the mcminnville newspaper which was the news register i shouldn't I, I, as i say the names i'm like oh i shouldn't say that what if someone doxes me and i'm like no one's gonna listen to this um so it's fine <laughs> uh yeah support your local newspaper i guess that's the that's the thing and don't swat my dad uh <laughs> Sorry, that's like a, that's, that would take way too long to explain. Uh, <laughs> uh, just listen to all my old live streams. Like, comment, subscribe, consume, consume, consume. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, this is me just doing like a, what do YouTubers say? Okay, so this is like panel one. And you can see like, so just using these two brushes. Um, let's take a look. I feel like that's not that's not terrible. I mean, it's not like the best, but it's not the worst either. I think her her lip would have like a would have maybe some color to it. I feel like that's not that's not quite right. Like I feel like like they would they would put like a half tone behind it or something. But um, it's this is more just to show how like you're using a big brush and you're using a small brush. So it's like you've got the fine line, and this is I think I'm still on Comic Inker. This is, you have to hold it a really particular way. Um, so this is almost like just, I've got the pen straight up and down to make these lines. And then if you're holding the pen more at a 45 degree angle, you can get sort of like that thick, thin, and it ends in that oval shape. And then if you, you know, you can kind of alter, go back and forth and get the different sizes, but the inker will give you like a, a bigger thick to thin. And the technical pen will will uh, sort of keep you into those finer lines, and it will give you a little bit of thick to thin. So it's like, the com by their powers combined, you can get sort of comic book style hair. <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm deleting all of these. It doesn't even matter. Okay, so let's go on to the next one, and this is an Alex Raymond. So the the one before was not Alex Raymond. This is Alex Raymond. And uh, I think this is uh this is from Rip Thorn. Rip Thorn? Oh, this is going to be just like the other one where I say the name wrong. But um this is like he I think this is like Rip Thorn's girlfriend and she I think like because this is uh and I don't know, maybe it's hard to tell someone like these hairstyles are now read as very old lady but back then they may have been like super hip <laughs> but you can see the different pens like like if you look at like the difference between this line um oh, we have to make a new layer sorry everybody if you look at the difference between like this line and and this line like there's just like the super thin and this and then the lot a lot more thick so it makes me think that they go through and do like a round of thick lines and a round of thin lines and, and use two pens i'm sure like if i'm wrong like please please tell me like my you know my goal is to like if like to to say things on the internet and then if i'm wrong i'll be like oh hopefully people will tell me <laughs> uh there's no faster way to learn that you were wrong than to be wrong on the internet <laughs> also like i'm just using these 
pens to the to the best of my ability. The guy who do, who did the pens Ram Studio Comics, and his his name is Robert Marzullo, I think Mar Marzullo. This is what I get for doing like a live stream where I have to like use both my hands. Uh, but he does have videos on like how he uses these pens, and he has a lot of like inking videos. He has he's like the real deal. Like like don't listen to me, listen to him. Um, Ugh, it's just a matter of like trying to get that shape. And here I said this live stream is about hair and I keep like getting lost in the, the other details. Okay, we're gonna go to our head. We can come back to this part later. But so you can see here, like you can tell immediately the difference between like the, the, the lines that have like super thick and the lines that don't. I wonder if I'm just too close. If I like pull back. Okay. Sometimes my lines are still kind of shaky and I'm like, yeah. That's not my favorite. Like, ideally you want like super clean lines, so I don't know if it's just... <sighs> also, I'm like, did I enunciate that? You want super clean lines, but I don't know if I'm just like looking at it at like, like with too harsh an eye. Um, yeah. Okay, so those are kind of the thick lines. There's an even thicker one. He might have done all of that too with like a a technical pencil. Oh my gosh, I didn't even tell you. So here's the thing about, um, oh, that's the pencil. I want the pen. I didn't even tell you uh, the reason um, I was having trouble finding stories for Alexander Raymond is that uh, he died really young. Um, he, he was in his mid forties and he, he was in a car crash. So he did some really influential strips. Uh, I think Flash Gordon, gosh boy, come for the poorly researched uh, jabbering on this live stream. Uh, and he did this sort of detective one and, and that was it. Like he, I don't know if he'd live longer, if he would have, you know, like, like what, what would we have seen from him? Like what would, like what would his impact have been? But he, he died really young. Um, I'd like to think it's young because I'm almost 40. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, he was just really good at this. And so remember what I was saying about, uh, the printing methods and, uh, I think that's why newspaper comics especially have the, a, a certain look and it's that you just like couldn't get that kind of detail to print like like if you think about like comic books today so it's like at the library I got a couple comic books and and now comic books are printed all in color uh, so you'll get like the full thing and they're printed on like nice glossy paper um, or you might not even buy a print of it at all. You might just read it on your tablet. You might have like a comic book file. So the world of color in comics is a lot more available. You can have gradients. You can have um, more than just like the sort of dull color palette that's accessible through offset print or for, through, yeah, web printing. Uh, so it, it can be easy just to forget that there was a reason that they were drawing things this way and it's because, uh, you know, they had to like have really bold lines for them to even print. Um, and the reason that they don't have like super realistic shading on like all of the characters, like if the colors are kind of flat, um, if the the range of value is described through half tones, like that's because uh, that's what you could get in a newspaper. And and a lot of times we imitate that style, and I certainly do, uh, even though there's no need for it. So it's like like a vestige of like sort of this older technology that that lives in the art that we're doing now, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that. You know, it's sort of like if you look at your keyboard. Um, you know, that's laid out because that's how it was laid out on a typewriter. There's like examples of that kind of stuff all the time, like all over the place. So it's not like, it's, it, it shouldn't be a surprise that that's also true in this art form. Uh, 
And I think if, if this art form didn't hold up, people wouldn't like still be doing it. It just looks cool to have like these thick, chunky black outlines and to uh, have something described in this graphic style. And I think it, it does kind of go in and out of style. Like, so I, when I read, you know, I've been getting some modern comic books, they don't always have this, like, like, I think there's more of like a sketchy style that's kind of in right now. Um, boy, look at me. I have no idea. I am making things up fast and loose. Uh, but, you know, it's like, it doesn't, things don't necessarily have the same, like, brush line work. And I think it's because people don't, you don't have to, like, depend on brushes anymore. Some do. I mean, it's definitely is a style. And the style comes from the constraints of the medium and like lots of other things but just you know it, the more you know about why it looked the way it did the better you'll be able to recreate it I think that's my philosophy and also it's just interesting um, but I have said before I just prefer digital. There's no way I could be doing this if I were doing it with a traditional pen and brush set, although someday I would like to try it. Um, someday. Oh, oh yeah, I'm standing. Uh, so the good news is I've been practicing drawing a lot, and uh, and so that's great. And I've I'm lazy, which is bad. <laughs> uh, and so the one thing I like about drawing digitally is that I can do it while I'm sitting down. Like you know, if you like go to art school and they're like, you have to draw standing up, and you're like, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my mom. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we'll do it for a grade. And I'm like, okay, mom, whatever you want. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I was like, I'm sorry I made you listen to that with your own ears. Uh, but the other, like last week I was, I was like working out and I was like, oh man, these push-ups really hurt. Like something happened to my right shoulder and, and I don't know, like, oh, that's weird. I'll just, you know, sometimes things happen. I'm almost 40, like I tweak something. And then like it, it kept happening and I'm like, oh no, what if it's that I'm like drawing so much and I'm, I keep doing it sitting down. Does that mean like horror of horrors? I have to draw standing up? Ugh, that's the worst. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not saying I'm gonna start drawing standing up all the time, but I am gonna try and do these live streams standing. And that, that's probably for the best because like I sit down all day for work uh, so I should probably stand more. And I actually, I used to stand all day at work. I used to, um, even, even as a graphic designer, like I didn't even have a chair at my job. I just would stand, uh, cause I'd heard that standing was good. <laughs> uh, yeah. And now I'm like, oh no, I have to stand for like 45 minutes. That's the worst thing that's ever happened. I can't just draw sitting down oh no life's the worst you can tell I have a very hard life yeah I don't know that looks okay I mean I feel like with all of these it's like Alex Raymond obviously drew it like 10 times better than than I'm drawing it right now but uh I'll never even get close to him if I don't like practice so like I, I'm trying not to be like too hard on myself but also, like, recognizing the flaws of my drawing. Yeah, I wonder if it's like if there's like a smoothing action I could take with the brush. Because it's like his, like, I just feel like I've got some, like, shaky, some shaky line work going on. I'm not, I'm not going to mess around with this brush right now, because uh, I am streaming, but I think, like, in the future. I'm just gonna see if like, cause I feel like there's like a stabilization tool that feels a little bit like cheating, um, but I mean, come on, <laughs> I'll take all the help I can get. Uh, this is kind of interesting down here. I wonder if I turn on reference, um, 
if it will show you <laughs> it's showing it to you upside down I guess that's not that helpful this is a new feature in procreate by the way where it like procreate five um, oh gosh now I can't get rid of it please go away I hate you I hate you how do I stop oh I'll just turn off reference that's boy uh, I was kind of toying with the idea of um, like so I mentioned I did a drawing on Friday night and and procreate like does this thing where they will export like a video of your drawing and I'm like oh maybe I'll do a live stream where I just like roast my drawing as I'm doing it and uh because there's definitely like some things I did when I was drawing that that I was like I look back and I'm like oh no like why are you such an idiot like why did you do that uh the thing about that drawing is that it does have a I don't know it it's like anything I do I'm I'm kind of I'm doing a lot of tracing just to like because I don't necessarily want to practice drawing although I do practice that uh, it's just when I'm practicing inking it's like a different story because um, and if I ever like post that one you you'd see why I say that uh, Because drawing is hard, and it takes, like, it's like if I have to practice the drawing and the inking, then I'm not going to do either. <laughs> I was like, like I said, lazy person. Um, but if I can just do one, then I'll do that. The fun part about that drawing on that Friday night is, um, it just reminds me of why I like drawing. Uh, cause it's like fun to create something and I like give myself a time limit and I say like, okay, you have to finish this by the time the session is over. And then there are people who are like, if I post it to the group Slack later, there are people who are like, oh yes, I see how that relates to that thing that we were talking about. Um, this past week we have been reading about lemurs we've been talking about some philosophy that came out of england in the the mid 90s it was called the ccru the cybernetic culture research unit and they were like super into this like made up place called lemuria lemuria although they might say it's real and uh they like they based some of this on a, a short story by william burroughs called the ghost lemurs of Madagascar and so they have like all these like fake lemur names and I was like my plan was I was just gonna draw I was gonna draw a bunch of lemurs and then I ended up just drawing one lemur because drawing is hard <laughs> that's the message of the story uh, but worthwhile I think like one of the things that's hard about drawing is that it's um, it takes dexterity like it's like it's the, I, I fully believe there are people who have natural skill and don't have to practice and and um, I am not one of them like sometimes I wonder I'm like is this as hard for everybody else to like figure out is it just me am I just like like climbing up the mountain backwards uh, and everyone else like took the tram or or like I, I don't even know what the right metaphor is because it's like oh like I don't I don't know I'll, I'll just say drawing is really hard for me uh, but with practice it's getting easier I guess I just like you always worry you're like oh am I just like super slow like did everybody else figure this out um, yeah, and, and it's hard because it, like, takes time, and you have to, like, learn it. You have to, like, internalize. And and it's, it's not like I've never taken drawing classes or I've never drawn, but I've never, I don't think, had, like, a consistent drawing practice, which might be the difference, because I feel like, you know, I'm almost 40. I've, I've been working as a graphic designer for nearly 10 years, and... I've had lots of opportunity, I just haven't done it. Uh, that's a, 
Americans, American slang. <laughs> it's not even American slang. Uh, I meant to say done it, but uh, if you want to sound like a hick, you can say dern. That dern cat, like that. That's, you can see I'm already like kind of getting uh, that dern cat. Uh, no. Does anyone actually talk like that? Is that just me, like, being insensitive to, um, people in the, who may or may not live in the South? If so, let me know. Leave a comment. Tell me I'm being a jerk. I'll apologize. I mean, my intent is not to harm, but I realize that even though my intent is not to harm, I can still cause harm. Um, or maybe let me know if you, like, just say that darned cat, like, every day. And you're like, yeah, no, that's exactly right. More people should say darned. Uh, I am excited. I, as a preview of things to come, I've been, oh, I guess, yeah, oh, I shouldn't talk about this because I don't know the name, but there's a, so I was, I was looking, you know, Hal Foster, great master of comic inking, and Alexander Raymond, great master of composition and design and thin and thick lines and a beautiful inker, Wally Wood, pervert, but also great comic inker. Um, y Nell Brinkley, great, great, great. And, and so it was like Nell Brinkley was the first one where I'm like, okay, like all the people that I'm gaining inspiration from are uh, dudes. And that is 1000% okay. Like if this, if the only people who ever inked were dudes like that, that's not a problem. Um, they are all, to be more granular, white dudes. And it, it's sort of like, okay, like, what what else do we got out there? Like like who who else is is drawing comics? And there's this museum in America. It's in Ohio, and it's like a museum of comics. And they have all of these um, comics from people that are underrepresented. Like if you look online, if you're just like list of best inkers ever, it's like all comic book artists. It's all people like Alex Raymond because he was amazing. Uh, and, and so there are people who were creating comics that, that sometimes get overlooked uh, because they didn't have, like, the same big distributions or uh, they were, you know, creating for marginalized communities. And so that, that museum is a great, was a great place and a great starting place for me to start finding people, you know, sort of like the hidden gems of the, the comic inking world. And uh, my birthday's coming up and I asked my dad uh, for a book... There's a, a native or indigenous comic artist, and he wrote Native Americans and comics, and, and I can't wait to read it. Um, I think it's going to be great. Um, yeah, so it's like I promise I won't just feature one particular type of person, because everybody can draw. Everybody can, I mean, if you've got a stick and you've got dirt, you can draw. And people have been drawing in every community, in every culture since the beginning of humanity so I don't want to just represent like one particular kind of comic inking because there's there's other people out there sorry I don't want to make anybody feel bad it's it's not it's nobody's fault <laughs> except for people who are dead or dying the past let's just blame the past but let's not repeat it if we can help it Ugh, okay, I can't end this way. I'm gonna end soon, I think. Um, it is nice to know that I can, like, still stand for some period of time without, like, losing my mind. It's probably good for me, too. Otherwise, I'd just, like, lay in my bed all day. And work. And then I'd go sit on the couch and work. Okay, let's take a look at this face. I feel like these lips are funny, but I, f I feel like they would print differently. Yeah, not bad. She's a blonde. I feel like my, my lines could be like tighter and cleaner, but I'm not like mad. And I like these pens. I mean, the more I use them, I feel like the more I get the hang of them. I am going to try and see if there's some like smoothing I can do. Um, I'm just going to leave her super big. Yeah, so that that's what I've got for today. Uh, thank you, everybody who listened to this all the way through someday. My hypothetical listener, if you enjoyed this content, like, comment, subscribe. I'm contractually obligated to say those things because this is a live stream on YouTube. Um, 
but I've enjoyed inking and I've enjoyed looking at this stuff. And uh, if you stuck with me, uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>